needs to be some run, some ride in this competition this season. It's been a day of pride and of joy and brilliant build-up, but Manchester United are going to be the ones lifting the trophy, going up the steps to the Royal Box and getting their hands on silverware and Newcastle United's long, long wait for a major honour will go into a 55th year and a 69th in terms of domestic football. The damage done in the first half with two goals in six minutes. Casemiro header ruled onside after a VAR check from a sure free kick. And then six minutes later, Rashford in the box into the ground and a deflection and up and over Carrius who played well in goal. They had chances, Sam Maxima blocked by De Gea at nil-nil. Burn with a header wide late in the second half. Joel Linton blocked in the second half, travelling towards goal. A few other close calls, but not enough. And 2-0 is the final score. But despite what we witnessed on the pitch and what we're seeing on the scoreboard at Wembley, the Newcastle United supporters have once again excelled themselves. And as you said before the game, John Anderson, if the match could be won in the stands by those in the stands, it would be Newcastle's all day. It's just a shame that the players who've done so well this season and so much to get here couldn't make it happen. Yeah, look, to be fair, Manchester United did to us what we've done to a lot of teams this season. They broke the game up, they didn't let us get into any any flu fluency about our play at all. Kept getting niggly little free kicks away, got people behind the ball, filled areas, broke when possible. Um, and we didn't have enough, you know, that, that's, that's the truth of it. We got in good areas the quality we didn't have enough quality on the day um, and that was the difference they had a little bit more quality in forward areas than what we did um, our decision making yet again was was poor uh, and Manchester United had seen it out you know second half they never tried to get forward they, they just had two banks of four they brought on two holding midfield players they then brought on a centre back and said, come and break us down if you can, and we'll just look to hit you on the break. And Carrius made a couple of decent saves uh, in that second half. If it hadn't been for him, it could have been more. Steve Howie, how would you sum it up? Um, I think the lads would be disappointed because we didn't perform the way that we know we can perform. And I think that can be said as a team, but also as individuals as well. Obviously, the more of us that win our individual battles, the better chance you've got of actually winning a competition or certainly winning a game. But I just thought there was too many of us today that probably didn't have our best of games, just whether it was just one of them games, whether it was the occasion or what, I don't know. But just luck didn't go our way. Maybe it's not creating enough chances as such. But the last four or five games have been like this, Steve, yeah, where we've been hitty-missy, huffing and puffing. Underwhelming, I, I would have thought. And it's like everybody's saying, oh, it'll be all right in the day. And it, it, you keep saying to people, it's not like a, a light switch. You can't just turn it on and turn it off. You, they had a bit of momentum coming into this cup yeah, final. Obviously. You know, we didn't have that momentum. And yes, the work rate and desire and everything that we've seen about this side has been there, was there again today. There's just a lack of quality in certain areas of the pitch. Well, I... I mean, obviously, you get asked questions leading up to it, and I was, I was confident coming into the game, but at the same time, in the back of my mind, if I would be brutally honest, if we'd have played Manchester United about two or three months ago, yeah. I'd have been more than Absolutely. positive about it, because yeah. Man United weren't in that good form. They are now, but we've just hit a bit of a, bit of a lull compared to what we were like in the, in the, for the other part of the season. So it's just kind of come at the wrong time. Um, they're in great form, they've had, they've had some excellent results, none more so than just recently against Barcelona, which is no mean feat. And I have to say, ultimately, I thought it was comfortable for them today. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I thought that the way they managed the game was 
was excellent. You know, they they knew they had pace up front. They knew they could worry us in behind fullbacks in those fullback areas. They got in behind us and they did cause us problems in those areas. And as I say, they just played with two blanks of four. And they had they had belief in their own ability that they they could pick it off and just go and play. You know, some sides do it and you, do, you think, you can play through this, we'll, we'll get a chance. But we never really got, never really had a clear-cut chance today. No, I mean, Morphy's hit one. He's hit a worldy and it's moved all over the place. Apart from that, we haven't created too much. Tears from Bruno Guimaraes as the Newcastle players and staff walk around their section of Wembley and thank the supporters for their brilliant backing once again, something they do, whatever the outcome, whatever the result. And uh, they will congratulate Manchester United as well, Newcastle on their victory. And uh, black and white flags and scarves there. They are chanting with well, pride in their hearts, power in their lungs. There may be tears in eyes from the Newcastle fans, but it's brilliant support. And I'm sure it won't be the last Wembley trip of this era, this chapter in the club's history. They are a different club now since the takeover. But one thing that unfortunately hasn't changed is the result at Wembley in a cup final. And Newcastle with a long losing run at Wembley, nine defeats in a row. It's the longest losing run of any team at Wembley in history. And of course, it belongs to Newcastle, who just couldn't even give their supporters a goal. It's still Rob Lee in the semi-final in 2000, the last player for Newcastle to score here. Uh, now, those in black and white are heading up the steps next to us, along to the left of the commentary box to collect runners-up medals and then Manchester United will follow and get the trophy. There are some gaps now emerging in the Newcastle section, understandably. They don't want to watch this trophy presentation, but they thank their players for everything they've done in getting them here, giving them this day and this experience. We're staying on here on BBC Radio Newcastle to... Uh, analyse the game more with Steve Howie and John Anderson. Simon Pride will be here as well shortly. Uh, on social media, it's at BBC Newcastle on Twitter, and we'll be putting reaction on there throughout the day. And if you want to send us a WhatsApp message, put BBC at the start. The number's 08000 321 treble 3. The final score in the League Cup final at Wembley. After 90 minutes... It's Manchester United 2, Newcastle United nil. There's that feeling you get when you find your keys down the back of the sofa. Oh, yeah. There's that feeling you get when you find a fiver in your coat pocket. Yes. And there's that feeling you get when you win a pair of tickets to see Newcastle and Sunderland play at home. Get in! Get in. I'm out with the moon. I'm out with the moon! I'm out with the moon! Get in! <laughs> to win, listen out for the referee's whistle during weekday breakfast with me, Matt Bailey. Brilliant, thank you very much. BBC Radio Newcastle, making a difference in the North East. This is Simon Pride here at Wembley as the Newcastle United players troop up and receive their losers' medals. We'll be taking your calls 0800 234 6565. We're on air until 7.30 this evening, so do give us a call 0800 234 6565 if you listen to our commentary, maybe watching the TV pictures at the same time. We'd love to hear your thoughts, keep the messages coming in as well via text 81333 and WhatsApp 08000 321 333. In either case, please. Start your message with the letters BBC and I'll put some of those messages, some of those thoughts, some of those reflections to John Anderson, former Newcastle fullback, Steve Howie, ex Newcastle centre half, between now and 7.30. And it's often said, Steve Howie, you've been in that position that the uh, losing team, when they have to go up to receive those, those losers' medals, knowing that they then have to stay and stand and watch the winning team lift the cup, it's um, something that you really really just don't want to do no um, it's awful as I said it's a fantastic arena to play in it's a fantastic occasion to be involved in 
but it's an awful, awful place to come and lose. Um, you know, you bring everybody down, all the fans down, all the hope, all that anticipation, and it ends again like this, which is awful. To be fair to the Newcastle fans, I think they've been absolutely superb. I mean, yes, there's a few spaces now, but literally, even minutes before the end, it was still packed, everybody was still in, they were still flying the flags, and I, honestly, if it had been any other fans, they'd have gone. And I think one of the reasons they did that, Steve, was that the team never gave in. All right, it might not have been their best performance, it might not have been uh, the result that they were looking for. They never gave up. We'll get your reflections and those of others as well. 0800 234 6565 is the number to call. But I'll just hand back to Razor uh, for the time being. We would have done this in victory for Newcastle United, so we will do it in defeat as well and uh, just bring you the trophy being lifted uh, by the winners, Manchester United. Thank you, Pridey. Newcastle have been up the steps to the Royal Box and now they're on their way down the other side, so Manchester United uh, players being uh, high-fived by fans all the way up to the top. And the uh, board uh, behind which they will stand to celebrate the trophy is uh, winning the trophy is already on the pitch. That's been erected and there are, well, maybe about a hundred photographers and cameramen uh, looking up at the Royal Box pitch side. Newcastle's players have stayed out there as well. Kieran Trippier went across to shake the hands of the referee and his team of officials. Uh, the sporting and gentlemanly thing to do. I expect no less from Trippier who led Newcastle on the pitch today with Jamal Lascelles, the club captain an unused substitute. It's BBC Radio Newcastle. They've been beaten 2-0 at Wembley. Casemiro, who got the first goal and I think got the man of the match, uh, getting uh, slapped on the back by supporters. Uh, we are only, I don't know, 15 yards away from the uh, players as they head up uh, the final set of steps to the top. They're just being given some instructions by some Football League officials. Sorry, I handed it to you probably a bit earlier, didn't that's, I? That's, that's, You've that's got a fine, long Pridey. commentary of the, of the trophy lips, and, it's, um, and as you say, all the Newcastle players are, are standing there, hands on hips, just wanting to get on with it, I think. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's going to happen very shortly. Just while we wait for the Manchester United players to assemble in the order they want to go up, I'll just remind you that you can call us on 0800 234 6565 and uh, send us text messages, WhatsApps as well, put them to Ando and Steve. Here they come now. Bruno Fernandes, the first to get his winner's medal placed round his neck. Green and white lanyard in the colours of the competition sponsor. Diogo Dallo there taken off at half-time, having been booked, kisses his medal. Harry Maguire and Bruno Fernandes now stand either side of the trophy. It's probably what Newcastle would have done if they'd won with Trippier and Lascelles, the electronic boards, pitch side and at the top of the lower tier, the bottom of the middle tier at Wembley, saying congratulations Manchester United. The Newcastle end has almost emptied. Cheer for Eric Ten Hag, his first season at Manchester United. And he has certainly uh, improved them, given them some success and success today in the form of the League Cup, which is now raised aloft by Harry Maguire and Bruno Fernandes. Manchester United celebrate. A lot of their supporters talked before the game about ending their trophy drought. Yes, they did, they really did. Six years without winning anything. They now have some more silverware. Newcastle have to wait and watch having been beaten here and now those in black and white shirts who gave what they had head off the pitch and they'll reflect on a cup final that ultimately went wrong for them 
but it's been a brilliant run Pridey and oh, Steve to Wembley we've really enjoyed it it's just a shame for them that they couldn't take that final step but like I said earlier I'm sure they'll be back Razor thank you you'll be back as well Matthew Ray's back our commentator and Razor will now go down and have a chat to Eddie Howe maybe grab one or two of the players if he can as well if we can we will bring you that reaction between now and 7.30 this evening. If not, well, Matt Bailey will be live from London tomorrow morning with his breakfast show, and you'll certainly hear reaction then, and, of course, further debate, further analysis on Total Sport tomorrow evening on BBC Radio Newcastle from 6 o'clock. But right now, well, you do have a chance to have your say. John Anderson and Steve Howey remain with me at Wembley as the Manchester United players just take it in turns to raise the trophy to the cheers of their supporters who have to a man woman and child all remained in the ground a few Newcastle fans have stayed as well just to watch them I guess just to reflect a little bit on what might have been as far as their team was concerned I'm going to read a few of your messages out as well because lots of you have been getting in touch on either 8133 on text or 08000 on WhatsApp. If you get in touch either way, make sure that you start your message with the letters BBC. You can also tweet at BBC Newcastle uh, using the Total Sport hashtag. And O'Bill has been in touch. He says, I am gutted. Are we cursed in finals? The better team, uh, Newcastle were the better team until oh. their goal. Uh, but the usual problem of late, if you can't score, you can't win. How uh, went death or glory with Isak up top uh, with Wilson, but although we played well, we had the same problem. Carriers had little to do till late on, but should have saved the second goal. Uh, what do we have to do to win at Wembley, asks Bill. Um, look, at I, I thought, yeah, I go along, that, but maybe we were the better side before they scored, but I, I thought they had a game plan that they stuck to for 90 minutes. You know, they, they allowed us to have the ball. They frustrated us the way that we frustrated sides this this season. They kept our shape really, really well. Everybody knew what their jobs were. They filled holes, they filled gaps. They didn't give you room to go and play in. And then they just broke on you with the pace that they've got up top. Um, and you always felt once the first goal went in that it was always going to be very, very difficult for us to get back into it because we found goals really, really hard to come by. And I'm perfectly honest, Friday, we didn't create enough. You know, we our decision making yet again, and it's something that we've spoke about for a lot of the season. Our, our decision making in the final tour of the pitch just isn't good enough. I'll do some more of your messages very soon, but we do have John on the line, who is a, a Newcastle fan to reflect. He's first up this evening, and uh, John, good evening. Thank you very much for coming on, and, and commiserations. How are you good feeling on. right now? To be honest, Bridie, I'm feeling a mixture of extremely proud of each and every one of the lads, and especially the fans as well, you know, even at 2-0 down, the way they were waving the flags, the way they were cheering the lads on, you know, they've really done the area and everyone proud, and thank you as well um, to everyone there at BBC Newcastle, because I've listened to the commentary in the build-up. Uh, it, it was absolutely brilliant, so thank you uh, on a personal note for that. In terms of the game, Ando, you've just hit the nail on the head. I thought for the first 20 minutes we were the better side. Maxi had that chance, which to hear you saved. Um, I, I, I've got to say, I didn't think their first goal, one, it was a free kick, and the camera angle, I, I honestly thought it was offside. So I did think at the time, but that shouldn't have been given. Carrius, I think he, he might have to take a little bit of responsibility for the second goal, but credit to him, you know, he's kept us in the game with some fantastic saves. But I think going forward, uh, and or Eddie Howe has got to make a decision, and I think he's got to switch Maximum and Almiron round. It's killing us getting into the byline, and by the time Almiron is getting back and trying to do something on the left foot, it's giving defenders a chance to, to, to get themselves sorted. And I think when we talk about team such in the South, I think that's one of the reasons for that. I think he's got to start putting people on the national side. Yeah, look, you know, Almiron his work rate and his, his, his desire and everything about him is, is first class you can never question it but never, yeah. you do you do wonder because he, he, he makes some great runs he gets to the byline yeah. and he 
he, he hasn't got a right foot he can't use that yeah. right foot and he drags it back onto his left and he kills people who are making runs in the middle of the park they've then got to reset again and it, it ju just takes players out, out, out of the game um, yeah. but look it, it was the second goal was a killer goal because you knew exactly what yeah. Manchester United would do second half they'd just sit in yeah. and they so disciplined in the way that they played and the way they broke it up um, and just hit us on the break and they knew yeah. they knew yeah. if they did that that they, they would get chances um, you know but look at disappointing as you say fans were absolutely magnificent they were yeah. they were first class um, from from minute one to the final whistle I mean they they, they outsung Manchester United fans all day long um, and we said beforehand, John, that if fans won your cups, you know, we, 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 we'd be overflowing with them. But unfortunately, it's not the fans that win it, it's, it's the players on the pitch. John, thank you very much indeed for your post-match thoughts and thank you for your kind comments as well ahead of them about our coverage this afternoon. It hasn't ended the way that we wanted, but it has been quite a, a weekend in terms of uh, simply the occasion and the number of fans who've been down here in London, the different characters that we've spoken to and all the build-up and... Uh, a lot of supporters I'm seeing on the messages that we're getting in are saying that uh, Newcastle United uh, will be back someday. This losing streak at Wembley will end. Will in Anik, thank you for your WhatsApp message. Couldn't be prouder of the lads today, he says, Steve. 2-0 um, did not reflect the game at all. Newcastle were the more dominant side and wore their hearts uh, on a black and white sleeve. Onwards we go, how way the lads uh, says will. And I'll, give you, I'll read you one more, then you can react to them both. Brian says, I have seen every final since 1974. We've played better in this one, but the same old failings that have plagued us this year cost us. Can't take our chances. I thought most players did well, but we lacked quality in the final third. I do feel sorry for Longstaff, local lad, subbed at half-time. We need an injection of quality in the summer if we want to challenge next season. I just hope the players react positive, positively to this defeat and the season doesn't just now fade away, says Brian. A lot of points made there, but uh, what would you take from those messages, Steve? Uh, we just can't hear from Steve, and then we'll try and sort Steve's microphone out. Um, right now, we can't quite hear from Ando. If you want to just respond while we try and sort Steve's microphone out, um, yeah, I mean, the there's, there. there's, there's, a, there's a lot of points there to, to, to uh, digest. Um, were we the better side overall? Hello. I, I'm not. I'm not too sure. I'm not too. I'm not too sure that we were totally the better side over the over the 90 minutes of the game. I thought. I don't Manchester, know. I mean, it's I difficult, isn't it? I, I, think, I thought I think Manchester, Manchester United's United. game plan was was excellent. Yeah, they, they, they controlled the yeah. game and they showed their yeah. nous. But yeah, I can understand why people feel that that I don't know Newcastle perhaps kind of in some ways gave more to the game in in, in their endeavour. They kept going they tried well, different yeah, things well, they, they had to because they, they were 2-0 yeah. down you know you're 2-0 down you've, you've got to try something different I thought Isaac had a, an influence on it when he came on I thought he played well Wilson doesn't look he's, he hasn't looked the same player since coming back from the World Cup now whether he's carrying an injury or whether he's feeling yeah. an illness or whatnot but he, he's just not the same player and <laughs> look it, it, it was it's been a great occasion. I mean, it's been absolutely brilliant. But I think it showed where we lack quality in certain areas of the pitch yeah. for di for these type of games. Yes. You know, for for cup finals, if you're going to win stuff, you need need quality in there. You need players to make the right decisions. And unfortunately, today we got in some real good areas, but our decision making yet again let us down. Sorry, Steve. We had some microphone issues. We've got, got yeah. you back now. I was just. I mean, for me, I thought we huffed and puffed. Obviously, the effort's there, it's, it's always going to be there. Um, but ultimately, my opinion is I thought it was a little bit comfortable in the end for, for Manchester United. Yeah. Um, we had chances, but not clinical or not in the box. You know, bars whizzed in the box and they're in good areas, but nobody's there to, to finish them off. You obviously need a little bit of luck as well. But I just thought... Whilst we did have our little moments, I thought for the vast majority of the game it was pretty comfortable for, for Manchester. 
keep the messages coming in. This one from Steve, I guess, relates to what you've just been discussing there, the failure to take chances, and you've touched on it just now, Ando. Uh, Steve says, what did the lads make of Callum Wilson's performance today? I have to say, I thought he was poor, says Steve. Yeah, look, at I, I'm a big Wilson fan. I think he's a, he's a good player. I think he... He gives the uh, centre-backs a rough time. I think he works the channels well. But as I said, since coming back from that World Cup, he hasn't looked the same player. His, his movement's not there. His physicality's not there. He, I think at times, I don't know whether you agree with this or not, Steve, he looks disinterested. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't look like he's interested in the game and in, in, in getting involved in the build-up. And he, he seems to do things that are half-hearted as well. Now, as I say, I don't know whether that's down to him carrying an injury but if he is he shouldn't be playing you know yeah I mean I, I'd sort of in commentary I, I'd sort of said I thought he was poor and you're right as well because again I'd mentioned during the game there's times he's going up for a header and he's just it, it, it looks like a talking gesture you know so a defender's like thinking oh thanks very much it's a free header he's not he's not making himself awkward he's not sticking his elbow or his arm in his face he's not trying to win it himself and I'm like you, I'm a Wilson fan, I do like the player. But I thought today, and what we've had maybe since the World Cup, is probably him not firing on all cylinders. And we can't afford to have players that's yeah. just having offish days, you need them all at it. 0800 2346565, do give us a call if you would like to share your thoughts after Newcastle United's 2 0 defeat by Manchester United here at Wembley. The losing streak, unfortunately, continues. Manchester United's players are only now starting to leave the field of play. Some of them are still out there showing the cup to the, the fans who are still gathered away to our left uh, to celebrate a first trophy win for them in six years. Razor mentioned it earlier, they've been calling that a trophy draft. So what do you call what Newcastle fans have endured? The Newcastle end now is pretty much completely empty. We will hear from some fans who are leaving the ground. If Dom can persuade any to talk to him, he has uh, gone outside to have a chat. In the meantime, we can have a chat to Alan, who is on the line now. Evening, Alan. Good evening. Good evening, lads. Hey, Alan. Hi, Alan. Hey, Alan. We know how much, before you start, we know how much this meant to you. And there was a wonderful oh, montage of your yeah, thoughts mate. that we recorded ahead of the match, which we, uh, which we yeah. thoroughly enjoyed. So I wanted to thank you uh, yeah. for that. And um, yeah. the hearing you speak then makes it obvious just how disappointed you will be now this evening. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, I'll tell you what, lads. I'm good at like you are, and I'm good at like the supporters. But we haven't got a dwell on being good at all the time and we haven't got to get used to losing either and I mm. think what John said when would it be it, nearly 18 months ago he says it's going to take time I'm talking about when the ownership come in this group of people that own us right they've got the best interest of my club your club at heart and it's going to take time you can see the difference at Man United the day, on the bench, the quality, right? The, the advanced in years of being better than us because we come from the dark place under Ashley. But that dark place is slowly going away. And I want every single Newcastle United supporter to keep on supporting and allow them, this club, to advance. Our owners to do their job the manager and the new players, there'll be players come and there'll be players go. Some who will make it won't get a shock that may go. But it will happen. There's got to be no sentiment. Things will change and it'll change for the better. Yeah, look, I think what people have got to realise is that, you know, if you had said to us 12 months ago that we'd be in a cup final, people would have laughed at you. So. We've come a long, long way in such a short space of time, yeah. and I think yeah. what's been achieved in, the, in that space of time needs to be yeah. needs to be appreciated yeah. and needs to be, you know. But once you're here, <laughs> it's disappointing. You know, yeah. you're disappointed that you, you you've lost the game and that you haven't won it. And uh, when you see the way the the side was su supported today and. 
the amount of fans that have been down here, Alan, and I, know, the, I, I mean they, they were absolutely magnificent, know. you know. But but it's it is disappointing. But you're right in what you say. It, it's it's been such a short a short time. It's been a short turnover. What we've achieved in that in that space of time yeah. has been absolutely mar- uh, unbelievable. But the one thing you would say is you don't want the the season to now drift away. No, you no. know you you don't want this to play on on people's minds, on players' no. minds. We've got you, there's still plenty to play for. You know there's still European football to play for. So as I say, you just hope that now on the back of this, that all of a sudden the season doesn't drift away. Exactly. Yeah, I, I'd just like to say finally, keep the faith. I said it, I said it earlier when I recorded that thing on. The things can and will happen for the better. I love the club, you love the club, and all the fans love the club. And it will happen. Just be a little bit more patient, and it will happen. Okay, lads. Alan, Good night, no. thank you. Thanks, before Alan. you go, Alan, before you go, I just want to read a message out that we've received uh, from Wendy, who is the daughter of Albert, who, uh, like you, was a regular yeah. contributor to Total Sport for many yeah, years, and I know you enjoyed Albert's contributions. Yeah. And, much, yeah, I'm Wendy... Wendy, yeah, indeed, I think a lot of people are thinking of Albert today. And uh, Wendy said, I just wanted to say how lovely Alan's words were that I heard on the radio before the match today. He reminded me so much of Dad, uh, says oh, well, Wendy. So nice I thought I'd pass that on that. to you. Aye. God well, so thank you very much, Aye. Alan. Thank you very much. Thanks, very much. Thanks Alan. Good Cheers, night. Alan. Thank you very much indeed. Um, let me read a couple more of your, your messages out. Um, this one is from Helena, who just simply says that she is proud of her team. Carl, who's in Boban, says, I've never felt this devastated over a game of football, but I've also never felt more proud of our team. We will be here again. We'll never give up. Our future is bright. Our spirit just got stronger than ever until I die, says Carl uh, from Boban. And Chris in Stocksfield says VAR yet again didn't help but we definitely lack the cutting edge more quality is needed in the final third says Chris yeah look at people are just reiterating what Steve and myself have said you know you get to that final tour to the pitch that's where you win your football matches that's that's where games are won and lost and you know if you've got somebody of the quality of Rashford you know we've seen what he did and the seen, seen the quality that he has that's where we need to be aiming you know they're the type of players you need to be looking at to get into the football club because we need a bit more quality in that final tour to the pitch we're going to hear from Eddie Howe very soon Razor has been talking to him the Manchester United players still remain on the pitch some of them still doing TV interviews and just uh, swapping the cup and getting photographs taken and uh, Dom headed out of the ground to speak to some Newcastle fans and he ended up chatting to one who's been rather high profile recently you've heard quite a lot of him on the radio over the last uh, few weeks so let's hear uh, what DJ Shaq had to say to Dom so I've just walked outside on the Wembley Way and bumped into DJ Shaq first of all the result didn't go our way today but we spoke to you before you said how was that the set was uh, unbelievable um Honestly, like, like we've got some of the best fans in the world, man. I've just met my like looking at everybody in the crowd and everyone singing along and that. And I can't remember who it was, but somebody from Talksport said that they've never seen Wembley or specifically the Box Park ever like that. That's even the Euros, the World Cup. That that's everything you need to know about our club and our fans. About the match, just wasn't meant to be, was it? Nah, it is what it is. I, I, do you know what it is? I think for a majority of the game, we played really well. Um, we just need to finish better. I think it's only a matter of time before we're at the top. We're just going to take time to build the squad. But all in all, I think the guys played to a degree. They played well. So um, it's just it's sad to see. It's sad to see that result. I remember at the end when everybody raised the flags. I've never seen a losing team be that gracious in defeat and be. That supportive and that just that that speaks volumes for our club and our fans and I, I, as sad as I am, I can walk away happy knowing one day our time will come. I've had lots of people just walk up to me and say, "I've never been so proud to be a Jody as I have this weekend." Yeah, absolutely, me. I mean, like, look, like um, I think like the way we conduct ourselves as fans and the the and our club, like. Our club, we've just we've got so much love. There's so many people who want to see us win, 
everywhere I've been, you know, when, when I've been privileged enough to travel around the UK playing, loads of people, they love our club and they want us to win and that that's a beautiful spectacle and I think that that's indicative of what we represent as a club, you know? And it's not just the players, it's the fans and the city. Remember when I was looking at the flags, I was going, I just want my city to do well because it's, it's, it's our turn, mate, like... We've had nothing for so long, and I'm speaking deeper than just sport. I'm talking as a collective of the city of Newcastle. It's been such a deprived area for so long, and it's time it's time for stuff to change. And I know that is happening, so that's why I can like walk away and go, you know what? We didn't get this one, but we'll win the war. We might have lost this battle, but we'll win the war. <laughs> DJ Shaq there speaking very well, speaking to Dom outside the ground I think speaking probably for quite a lot of Newcastle United supporters and there'll be plenty that will be staying down in London tonight and it won't be the mood of celebration for which they had hoped but um, there will still be plenty of hope for the future they would hope certainly the way that the club has transformed Ando and Steve over uh, the last year year and a quarter that uh, there will be more occasions like this they haven't been here for a, a cup final since 1999 you hope that the wait won't be another another 24 years for the next one you would think that it would come around a lot sooner than that wouldn't you Steve yeah absolutely I think if you're looking I mean as I said we've we've just had you know people in the, the callers on um, and I, I totally agree with what was said I think the club will be going places 100% I think we're we're ahead of schedule of where we we thought we would be um, you know as Ando said 12 months ago if you said 12 months from now we'll, we'll be where we where we are in the league and also in the cup final you'd have, you'd have thought you know you need kind of locking up <laughs> um, but that is the fact um, I, I do think that in the summer there'll be comings and goings which will strengthen the team and I do believe it is a case of this is the first of many that would come and certainly um, you know, we definitely will get to a stage where we come here and the fans is here still while we're here and haven't gone because they're disappointed at the result. A couple of people have said that they hope that the season Ando doesn't fizzle out mm. from here. The fact is, there is, you know, they might be out of both cups now. There is still a heck of a lot to play for this season, bearing in mind their league position and bearing in mind the, the rewards that there are to play for. So they must uh, make sure that they, they bounce back from this and do so quickly. Yeah, look... It doesn't get any easier after this, you know. They've they've got a week now that, and they need to get over this quickly because we're at Manchester City next weekend. Um, they're chasing another league title. That won't be easy. Um, you know, they, they look like there was a few knocks today, so mm. it'll be interesting to see who's recovered, who'll be recovered, and who's going to be fit for that game. But yeah. Um, it's like when you fall off a bike, they say the best thing to do is get back up on it and get cycling again, and that's what we've got to do, you know, we've got to, as disappointed as we are, we've got to put it behind us and we've got to get back into the, into the league race, um, starting with Manchester City next weekend. Thanks for all the messages you've sent to BBC Radio Newcastle. We'll get to read some more of those out between now and half past seven. You can also give us a call. You might well still get on air if you're quick now and give us a, give us a call on 0800 234 6565. You can share your thoughts, your reflections, your hopes for the future even with Steve Howie and John Anderson. But now let's hear from the Newcastle United head coach. He has been, Eddie Howe, has been reflecting on today's defeat with Razor and before him with the BBC's Juliet Ferrington. I thought we played really well between both boxes today. I thought we gave everything to the game. There's no lack of effort or commitment from the group, but we just didn't get those breaks. Both ends, I thought the free kick was probably a harsh one to give away. Um, we should have defended it better. Second goal was a killer for us quite soon after. But then we do everything we can to try and get back in the game. We have to survive some dangerous moments on transitions, but the players gave everything. We had, we had the chances, I felt, but uh, we didn't take them, and ultimately that's why we lose. You started so aggressively in the first half, such a pace to your game as well. You changed it around in the in the second half and, and you were forcing them to defend. Yes, I say both boxes between them. I thought we were really good um, first and second half. No complaints with how we played. Obviously, the scoreline probably doesn't say that and that's where football can be cruel at times. But general performance individually, I thought we were good, collectively good. But yeah, probably weren't good enough around their box, which has been a 
bit of a, a consistent theme for us in the last few weeks, and that's something that we're going to have to address. Everyone talks about it being a rebuild. It's not a quick fix. So what do you take from this, the positives you take from, from losing a cup final? Well, I don't think you take positives from losing. You take positives really in terms of the performance. And I think we've had a group of players this year that have given everything in every game. I'm very proud to be their manager because of that effort and commitment that they've given the club. I think they've represented the fans really well again today who were magnificent for us and just so disappointed for them really that we weren't able to reward their incredible support with, uh, with what they wanted. Such defiance we saw in the added time right at the very end as well with the, the waving of the flags, the support. You've reunited the city in itself and it's now just taking the team, the club, that little bit further, isn't it? Yeah, and that's probably the hardest step, um, but that's the one we've got to try and bridge now. The competition we're in is very, very high. The level's high. Games are decided by the smallest of margins. And that's the challenge for us, is to continually improve. I think we will. I hope we will. And we can have more days like this on a, on a regular basis. Thanks. Eddie, you did all you could, didn't you? You made a change at half-time, a slightly different system. You, you put players on at the end, attacking changes in an attempt to get back into it. Yeah, I felt I did everything, or we did everything that we could uh, tactically to try and get back into the match it's difficult at 2-0 when you're playing the elite teams you know transitions we knew would be a problem for a second half but I felt in the main we dealt with them really well so yes yeah, always difficult to chase games um, but I thought we did it as well as we could probably bar the end part um, yeah we changed tactically we, we moved players around we were continually just trying to find solutions to give Manchester United more problems they would then make changes to try and combat us so it was, it was an interesting ta game tactically uh, and yeah a very high level one there was a lot of discussion before the match about the goalkeeping situation with Nick Pope not available. Loris Karius was beaten twice, but he made two or three really important saves for you and must reflect on, on what was a, a good performance in a high-pressured game. Yeah, I think Lor Loris can be really pleased with his performance. I think he's conceded two goals, but yeah, that's the life of a goalkeeper. You can sometimes concede two goals and play really well. As you say, he made a number of really good saves for us, as we knew he'd probably have to today. Um, especially trailing 2-0 where we're leaving spaces behind us. Yeah, I thought he could be very proud. You made a change at half-time and Isak came on for Longstaff. Is Sean Longstaff OK? Because he went down before, before the break. Yeah, he did, but he's fine. Um, disappointed to come off naturally, but I just felt we needed to chase the game as early as we could and give ourselves the longest time possible to try and score and get back into it. We haven't, still haven't seen much of Alexander Isak, but you must have enjoyed what you saw from him because he was at the heart of a lot of good attacking play, wasn't he, in the second half? Yeah, I thought he was excellent. Um, really, really good physically, technically and tactically because it's a slightly different position for him. But uh, again, I think once we get Alex right up to top speed, I think he's going to be a great player for us. And the pain of defeat is horrible and maybe when the dust settles you'll be able to reflect properly on, on what you've achieved by getting here but that will fire you up, won't it, to go and finish this season strongly because you've been so good getting to Wembley and in the league up until this point. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think all it does for me is fire my passion even more for the, for the football club, for the supporters because I'm so disappointed for them today that we haven't given them what they they wanted they've come here in their thousands and supported us superbly it just fires me to try and get that success for them Eddie Howe speaking to BBC Radio Newcastle's Matthew Raisbeck putting the questions before him uh, was our BBC colleague Juliet Farrington and well he tried to look for positives I guess as you do after uh, any kind of game any kind of defeat it's difficult in circumstances like this but um, yeah as he said at the end there you know that's just made him and probably the players all the more determined to try again come back here again perhaps and get it right the next time yeah, I think once you've witnessed what you've s seen today, the, the spectacle that was here, um, the support that was here, um, it makes you want to come back for more, makes you hungrier for more. Um, you would hope that that is the case. I think the summer is going to be huge for us. Um, you know, as Steve has said, I think there'll be Cummins, but I think there'll be Goins as well. Uh, I think um, it could be a busy, busy summer for us because the certain areas that most definitely needs looking at and needs adjusting um, and at this moment in time we just haven't got the squad of players to be able to cope um, you know you look at the bench you look at what Manchester United brought on we didn't have that luxury we weren't able to do that um, and if you're going to compete at this level that's where you've got to get to.
The pitch is now empty apart from ground staff, the TV cruiser packing up pretty much and the stewards as well are all starting to troop out now of an empty Wembley Stadium. All those flags that the Newcastle fans were waving as well are, are being cleared up. That'll be quite a job because pretty much every supporter had one. It was quite a display of black and white flags, not just before the game, but also in the last five minutes or so as well when the Newcastle fans, realising that it wasn't going to be their day, decided that they would unite and just show that they were still 100% behind their team. On the line now, is Steve another disappointed Newcastle fan Steve but probably proud as well yes exactly both those words proud and disappointed but before I get into the game I just want to say both a thank you to you guys I was listening to this this morning and this afternoon before I went out to watch the game really good coverage of listening to the fans and talking to fans what have you and I also want to thank all the fans lads, lads men women that went down there what you did down there was absolutely fantastic. I'm up here in Gateshead, North uh, Liam Lane, and all years were great down there. Thanks very much for that. Well, it's been quite an yeah. atmosphere. Thanks for your kind words as well. It's pretty easy covering something like this because there are so many people to speak to, uh, so many characters. It makes it quite easy uh, for us. We just want to, we just want to kind of give a, a reflection of the, the mood generally. So, so thanks, uh, thanks for your kind words there, Steve. Yeah, but I've also had a couple of texts come back and said, yeah. Yeah, what they've said to some of the stewards down there is, yeah, see you next day, see you next year. <laughs> that, made me, that made me chuckle. But personally, I thought, I can look at a game objectively. I thought we were the better team on the day. It's just we lost two early goals by one. Everyone knows what war and mistakes are. And I think I might be one of the few that did blame our keeper for it. Even though there was a deflection, I still think he should have got it. Mm. But their keeper had virtually nothing to do. We had opportunities, but we didn't do anything with them. Yeah, it's, it's, that's been the story of the last four or five weeks. You know, we've plenty of the ball, plenty of possession. We're not working the goalkeeper enough, um, you know. Um, and we were coming here this morning, Stephen, we were saying that we needed to score first. We thought if Manchester United mm -hmm. scored first, yeah. then all of a sudden we're chasing the game. Have we got two goals in us? Um, and you wondered who was going to get them goals. Um, look, it was the second goal. I felt a little bit for him because I, I think he's already on his way down and it takes that deflection mm. and he, he just can't readjust. Um, and it, it just goes over, go, go, goes over his arm. Um, but well, he, to be fair to the boy, I thought he played well. I thought he he, he made three or four top saves. Um, he did. You know, that, it, that goal, yeah. After that second goal, he was spot on with everything he did after that. But the game, you said yourself, it's a game of opinions. My opinion is, I thought he could have done better. You said, yeah. You just said it, it, the deflection took it away from. Him. I but thought he could have done better. I have to be honest. I said that to Priory. Mm. And I think you sort of were kind of on that. On I, that I tried uh, to back him up a bit. So yeah. so we were looking at it in slow motion at the time. But I think a lot of, yeah. a lot I know of people share. I know it's your... difficult, but I actually think he can do yeah. better. Yeah, he might be well, disappointed with it. Thought, I also thought in the first 10, 15 minutes of the second half, if we get an ear goal then I think we could have had them very, very worried. Because Fernandez has always got a red card in him, I think, and it, mm. he would have panicked and he could have led panic through the rest of them. But anyway, I, like I said, I just want to thank everyone that went down there. I couldn't afford to have other commitments and what have you. What I've seen on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and with you guys, Radio Newcastle, thank you very much, everyone. And... I'll let you get on the next caller because there's probably loads of people I want to talk to you. Thank you very much Cheers indeed, Steve. Steve. We Thanks. do appreciate you taking the time to give us a bell this evening. And yes, we will be back sometime. We have covered Newcastle here. We've covered Sunderland here uh, plenty of times as well in recent years. Haven't had that many victories to, to shout about overall, have we? But um, yeah, in Newcastle's case, it is a, a losing streak that they want to put an end to as soon as they possibly can. It is that record-breaking losing streak at Wembley now, isn't it? Which uh, yeah, is, is something. I mean, you know, you can't. It, it's you can't connect 
the team of 1974 or 1976 or even 98 and 99 to, to this team. You know, they're all completely different players. Those past defeats won't have been in the minds of these players. Of course it won't. But um, you can understand nonetheless why some fans are messaging tonight and saying that they feel like their club is cursed because it's, it's, a, it's a ridiculous run of defeats here. Yeah, yeah, it is. But, you know, I harp back to the two FA Cup finals um, and we spoke about it earlier on, you know, don't, two sides that we lost in 98 and 99 were exceptional sides you know they um, one won a double the other won a treble you know they they had real real quality players I don't think this Manchester United side is of the standard of that of those sides but they've got quality in there and as I said beforehand they had momentum coming into this game um, and I think coming into cup finals you always need that little bit, bit of momentum you need that self-belief you need that confidence I think they, they had it with the results that they've had in recent weeks and we haven't and y you know y you've seen it in the performances in recent weeks the, the, the energy levels and that have dropped and even today as hard as we worked and we, we always work hard and we give it everything that we've got I just thought it, the energy levels were just weren't quite there again but look you, you can't you can't take anything away from it you know they they worked their socks off they gave it their best I, as I said earlier I just thought that Manchester United managed the game really really well let's hear from a few more supporters outside the ground now Dom James has been chatting to a few first of all can I just get your name Mark Isaac, Isaac. not the result Newcastle fans are wanted but I have had quite a lot of people come up to me already and said I've never been as proud as I am now to be a Newcastle fan I'll let Isaac answer that I'll I, 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 I've never had it in my lifetime where I can remember us getting to Wembley and that's that's one of the best things I've ever had but it's annoying because we, 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 were, we were, didn't play bad today we were unlucky there was a couple of chances that didn't go our way we were, we were probably the better team overall but it, it just we're just not clinical enough for the minute and unfortunately it's not the first time I've come and watched for lose 2-0 yeah. at Wembley and uh, yeah hopefully it'll be the last right. hopefully it'll be the last time I see them lose here I want to see them win here next time we'll be back. and we're going to be back we're going to be back before long Chris not the result Newcastle we're hoping for today but do you know what it is man I think we didn't disgrace ourselves I thought they had two chances and scored we didn't create anything, but it's one of them, mate. It's the first of many. If somebody had a said it at the end of last season, you'll be in a cup final in February and you'll be in the top five, every single person in that ground would have snapped the hand off. So it's onwards and upwards. Darrell, oh, sorry, Darrell, I'll come to Darrell in just a moment. That was Dom speaking to supporters outside the ground. Tired and emotional sounding, uh, understandably, I guess. Uh, well done to Dom for managing to stop a few and having a, a conversation with them. But Darrell is on the line. I understand you're already on a train north, Darrell. You've done well to, to get out, having been at the game, and, uh, and get on the transport. And call us and then <laughs> yeah. lose the phone line. Yeah, that's right. that's what yeah. happens when you're on a train. Oh, there I was going to say, there'll be that big oh, yeah. tunnel that you go through when you've come out of King's Cross. You're there, Darren. No, We've no. got you now. I'm, we can hear I'm, you now. I'm, just, I'm, I'm actually just arriving at King's Cross on the tube now. So ah, all right, I okay. I haven't made it out oh. yet, but uh, okay. no, no. So okay. Give us your thoughts the then. Um, Give us your thoughts in case we lose your signal again. Yeah. Um, dead proud of the lads for making it this far. Lost for a team with experience in playing in major finals. Um, I thought we, we should have taken chances a bit more, but it, you know it's just one of these things that happens on a day. I'm still a bit reflective about everything at the minute, and then take a couple of days to digest everything, and then we'll probably be able to form a few more opinions. I thought we're a little bit wasteful with some of our chances, but you know these things happen. Well, I, I think we've we've spoken about it a few times and gone over this, like gone over it a couple of times, is the fact that. <clears throat> We created some half chances as such. I mean, obviously, there was the one with Alan St. Maximin when he fires it at De Gea. De Gea just stands, makes himself big, and just reacts to the save. Um, I think, basically, it hits him because he hits it that quick. But, um, I mean, in my, in my opinion, whilst I thought it was an OK performance, I just don't think we did enough to win it. And I just yeah. felt as though... And, and people might think I'm harsh, and people might think I'm kind of going a little bit harsh against the team 
but I did actually feel as though whilst we had little periods, we didn't create enough, we didn't put uh, De Gea under that much pressure, and I just thought it was reasonably comfortable for, for Manchester United in the end. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, like I say, when it comes down to the experience, I think the, the boys will learn from this and they'll be ready. You know, they've, they've been in their final now, they've, they've experienced the loss, and I'm sure they will want to do it again. We'll be after a win the next time. Darrell, I'm just wondering what the atmosphere is like among the supporters. I mean, you've been with the fans leaving the ground and getting on the yeah. getting on the tube and heading back to King's Cross. Are people yeah. feeling dejected, or is it more is it more just a sense of a sense of pride and a sense that this might be the start of something? Well, how would you sum up the mood? Um, I think it is a bit of pride, and I think it's a little bit subdued as well. You know, it's been a long day for everybody. There's been a lot of effort gone into it, and I think the day out of it, the, the whole day out, and the whole event, the whole spectacle is probably taken out of a lot of people, but. The people are in good spirits still playing. I think they all know that this is the start and that we'll be going to Wembley many more times in the near future. Daryl, do have a safe journey home. Thank you very much indeed uh, for talking to us. I just want to rush through a few of the messages that we have received as well because we do appreciate everybody getting in touch so get through as many as we can. Uh, William says it was a decent performance at Wembley. Uh, the better team in large parts Newcastle were but the same old story. Two bad bits of defending and the usual problems of not taking chances came back to haunt us again. I'm absolutely sick of losing at Wembley says William. Now Ben says Isak has got to play next week. Ando and Steve. Wilson is simply not good enough for us and Isak clearly made a difference when he came on I thought Isak did well when he came mm -hmm. on um, but I don't think he Isak has played up there I don't think he enjoys playing with his back to goal he prefers that free roll where he can drift into holes and pick it up and get torn and get running at people um, I think in it, when he's played up there on his own he's been he's been ineffective uh, I think if you're going to play him you've got to play him up there with somebody and play him off somebody so he can just drop like he did today he kept picking up some great little positions mm. by dropping yeah. into the hole um, but it's Wilson's been disappointing you know the, the, I think he's he's a lucky boy to keep getting back in the side you know because his performance levels yeah. haven't been good enough do you think it was the right decision Steve to bring Isak on at, at half time and to make that, that tactical change when, when he did it was, yeah, it, it was a bold thing to do but it had to be done yeah, I mean, as I said, I think we d we spoke about it before the game about possibly playing the two of them up front, but mm. then it was like a shifting of the team. I think Ando is absolutely spot on. I think if you just play Isaac up on his own, he doesn't actually drift into those yeah. pockets. And if he does drift into those pockets, then we haven't got anybody up there yeah. when we do get the balls in the box. So it, the manager has to play the two of them or somebody else up front instead of Wilson um, because he's, like, he's either likes to be in those pockets or he likes to drift out on the left before he came to Newcastle when I watched him he, he, he always had the ball on the left hand side and was cutting inside but yeah I mean listen f players every player regardless of where you play you have little dips and you have maybe so you're not having the best time in the world um, I've seen Wilson a couple of times especially you know obviously not like uh, Ando but when I've seen Match of the Deer and stuff like that or any live game he, he ha Wilson has been off the pace a little bit um, and today was, was another yeah. day and today is the day when you do need your bigger players to, to, to come turn and stand up, up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, were you surprised I know he was obviously exhausted he put a shift in but were you surprised that Alan San Maxima was substituted bearing in mind he had been perhaps the, the biggest danger yeah, I thought he was he was causing problems again though, but I think it's I think that this is a fault of a lot of our players. We get in good positions and it's just the final ball. I think he'd done really well a couple of times in the first half. He, he, he sent as, as Ando said, sent him a kipper or done him a kipper um, for one of the chances. Um, but yeah, I mean he'd be disappointed. But okay. as I said, it, it is just the final ball. But he is not the only one. It's two or three. I always scratch me at it, Almiron. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I find it embarrassing. Players nowadays can't kick with both feet. OK, I'm going to read one more very quickly. It's just come in from Gareth. Take off the black and white specs. Pick ourselves up because we weren't unlucky. We weren't the better side. Still a lot to play for, though. We've come a million miles. Uh, thank you uh, to the Total Sport team for a fantastic day, uh, says Gareth. Thank you, Gareth. Steve, thank you Pleasure. very much indeed. It's been great having you. Uh, do during our coverage here at Wembley, even if it wasn't the result we hoped for. And we'll look forward to having you back on, on Total Sport later in the week. Ando, thank you very much as well. Are Cheers you going to try and head home or are you going to be down here for Total Sport tomorrow? No, I'm going to try and head home. Okay, good luck. I've had enough Cheers of this place. <laughs> good luck with that. Uh, Ando, honest 
as ever. Uh, thank you very much indeed for listening to us throughout the course of the afternoon. It didn't go the way that we hoped. It went the same way really as it did in 74 and 76 and 98 and 99. But I'm sure that Newcastle United will be back, even though it wasn't their day today. Bye for now. Luke Shaw, left-footed delivery, headed into the net. The opening goal goes the way of Manchester United from Luke Shaw's cross and a header from Casemiro from close range beats Loris Carriers. It's Manchester United 1, Newcastle United 0. And this for Manchester United is about Veghorst. Edge of the area, danger here, Rashford. Oh, how oh, nice. how's that gone in? It's gone over Carriers. it might have taken a touch, but Newcastle have got big problems now with six minutes to half time. It's Manchester United 2, Newcastle United 0, and it's Marcus Rashford with the goal. Total Sport. On the station with Newcastle and Sunderland commentary exclusively live. BBC Radio Newcastle.